this is the cutlass, uh, like a Scottish broadsword. I saw, I saw the side sword ward rapier. Tell us about the pole arms. Do you have also different types of pole arms? Yeah, so we've done, we try quarterstaff, which again, that's a very kind of English thing as well. People like that because it's, you know, we have Robin Hood over here. Um, and we, the other one mainly we've done is, is partisan, which is it's like a short sword, uh, winged short sword short on, a, on a pole. Um, that's fun, but again, it's, you have to be very careful because the power of, a, as you know, the power of like staff weapons is crazy. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Um, that's really kind of the only time we've ever been scared is when we've been fencing with those. Of course. Yeah. Safe, yeah, it's yeah. dangerous, yeah. absolutely. Um, let me just ask you one more. Uh, oh, okay. Do you also teach daggers and knife systems? Uh, we do not as on their own. So we do sword and dagger. Um, we do uh, we do uh, walking stick and cane. Oh, okay. Um, dagger systems, you know, again, it's not something that really appeals to me. There's, um, yeah, <laughs> we have a problem with knife crime over here as well. Okay, could you expand on it, please? Well, there's there's just a lot of knife crime in England at the moment, unfortunately, um, and I think. I think in some sense, you know, like you should be teaching, I think you should be teaching martially something that is, is appropriate. But, you know, you know, and, you know, I would never, ever encourage anybody, they could carry a stick, they can punch somebody, but it, it's a knife fight's crazy. You're never going to, you know, you, you ain't getting out of it unharmed. Okay. Yeah, you know, I just I think that's, um, you know, I think there's a lot of, um, And it's fine if people want to do it. I think there's a lot of um, fantasy stuff with knives. And it's just, it's too ugly, too dangerous. Okay, understand that. Um, okay, Chris, just uh, the next question which I have is about a famous question. I know, you know I'm going to open Pandora's box. Okay. Do you edge parry or do you flat parry? Or do you oh, do if both? Single, if it's single handed, Yes. Generally speaking, it's going to be with the edge. Okay. Could you explain mm -hmm. why? Uh, because because you're using, say, we go. So I've got. I can't show you. Okay. Here's a here's a very battered. This is an antique cutlass here. Okay. If I'm parrying, because I'm holding the sword fundamentally like this, whatever grip you might want. But say, if I parry with the edge, it's against my skeleton. It's not working with my skeleton. So I'm gonna almost like you're always like punching into the parry because you want to align your wrist and your elbow and your shoulder. Okay. Um, you can, there are deflections with the flat of the blade, but that's a different thing. Yeah, there's different thing. That's different, yeah. So especially when you get to um, something with very strong, like a, you know, a basket healthy guard, um, you can kind of do what in boxing terms you would call like a catch and shoot system. Yeah. Where you can really stop, you can punch into the parry and then the past. Yes. Um, okay, now the famous question is, if the shorts and edges were sharp, wouldn't it damage the edge of your sword if you edge parry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how long are you going to be using a sword for? Okay. No good yeah. point. I mean, my, I mean, how long, to, how long, I mean, maybe, I mean, good hopefully point. not too long, right? Um, yeah. I only have to get you through the one battle. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's the, those are the kind of the mythic, you know, the mystic of like Escalibur that you have this magic sword that will see you through. through yeah. I think for most people, it was probably, if you look at most, um, if you look at the Victorian period where they, or the, you know, the cutlasses, they're so disposable. Yeah. They're so cheaply made. They're just tough and cheap. It's just a tool. Okay, very good. Um, do you practice in your soul, in your school, cutting test? Um, we done things occasionally, but not a great deal. Okay. Um, so you know we've done it a little bit. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's good, something that, something that everybody should do. Absolutely. Okay. But it's not something we focus on. That you know, we, I'm, I really like, and I really, I really like the art of fencing. Yes. You know, I really like it. I just really like it. That's what. <laughs> You know, um, yeah. So that's okay. what we mainly, we mainly focus on that. I know it sounds silly, but we really do 
That's yeah. what I like. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. What about armor? Do you also train in armor? No, we don't. We don't. I'm very, I, you know, I, um, again, I don't think many of the guys who train with us could afford it, for one. Oh, of course. That's <laughs> a huge problem. It's the same with uh, our organization. Few yeah. can afford it. Um, another thing is, again, we both, I really like the art of fencing, and I see the art of fencing is to offend and defend with the sword. You have, that's your, that's your armor. Okay. Okay. This but is... if I could afford it, you never know. Yeah, I mean, it's very expensive, definitely. Yeah. Very expensive. Yeah. I mean, this is what we also see now in our members. Few have it, a full set of armor, but it's sure. really expensive. I mean, full set of armor, I mean, a really well made one is really exp expensive. No matter where you have it made, I mean, <laughs> it's going yeah, to be expensive. Sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not cheap. No, absolutely. Okay, let's go to the, to the other one. And I would like to ask you about. Um, your school. Could you tell us how many schools you have and be just explain, do you have a unique system? For example, if someone comes and trains, for example, in London, Brighton, or in other schools, first of all, how many schools do you have? Again, could you? Uh, we have well, six and a half, should we say? Six and a half, seven. So we have, we've got, we have uh, Brighton, London. Uh, in Ireland, we have Galway and Letterkenny. Uh -huh. We have uh, one in Milan. We have one in Brussels. And we have the beginnings of a sale in Seattle in, in America. Oh, that's good, Seattle. So at the moment, there's not very many of them, but they're working toward And again, it's been very difficult the last year to, to push oh. that on. Okay. Yeah. And do you have a program where each, saw, each, uh, each school follows? Yeah, yeah we, have a, we have a system that we work, uh, we work people through it. So there's, like, there's a path that we ask you to travel um, to go on. Um, and we have like a very loose grading system, mm -hmm. which is really just to give people things something to aim for because it's, it's we're non-competitive. We don't take it as a as a competitive sport, so we found it's very useful to give people something to work towards, and and a, and a sense of them to achieve something. Um, yeah, so yeah, we have a system. We have a system. We work it. Uh, we it's uh you know you go through stages of when you use weapons, you know, we start people with a single sword. Uh, hopefully they get fairly proficient with that. Then we move on to combination weapons. Um, I encourage everybody to try and box as well. Um, not everybody does. Yeah, of course. That's and their choice. Um, some people turn up wanting to fence and end up just boxing. So, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, okay. And so how many grades do you have in your system, if I may ask? So from, uh, so you come in as a beginner, but then we have what we call a scholar. Uh, so again, we're taking traditional names from, that would be from the traditional English, English schools. Uh, we have scholar, free scholar, senior scholar, provost, and what we call a master, but that's just teaching in terms of teaching. So in terms of become a master within school, you have to have taught somebody else to be the level of a provost. Um, yeah, this is um, each grade is you know it's tough. The first, the free scholar one is the first tough one where we ask you, you know, quite physically demanding things. You have to hold the floor for two hours uh, and fence quite well, not you know amazingly well, but you have to be able to physically hold the floor for two hours. Uh, we ask you to do a twelve-round boxing exhibition. So not a boxing match, but an exhibition of 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 pugilistic skills and then there's a technical um technical side where you have to teach a series of lessons very interesting uh, do you also uh, teach um grappling and wrestling in your school not to a great level there are um we have like stand up stand up um throws and, and grabs which are basically from the um london prize rule of boxing the bare knuckle boxing so uh, it's very much stay on your stay on your feet as much as you can, and if you go down, get up as quickly as you can. Because my dog just scratching the carpet. No problem. 
Okay, then the next uh, question I have, could you tell us about the boxing system you teach? Because many uh, Muay Thai fighters, boxers watch our channel. They would be very interested in that. What yeah, so to... um, obviously it's, I think, uh, we do a kind of a mixture of, as we train, when we spar, we spar with Queensbury rules. So with uh, nice padded gloves and Certain blows are illegal, and we, you know, it's very much uh, controlled sparring. Uh, we train for bare knuckle style, so the regency, regency style. Um, uh, so that's got some grappling, some grabbing, different different fist strikes, um, manipulations. Um, we've looked a bit of we put we introduced a few sabat kicks as well, um, but again, they're very difficult to spar. So. Again, you go to the art and the science. When we're sparring, we'll spar very modern. And when we train, it's a, it's a dirtier, shall we say. Yeah, of course. I, I fully understand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, let's, uh, that's very good, very interesting. And then let, I'm going to uh, open another thing. And because this is extremely very interesting, before I started to record, we had some exchange on it. And maybe we can go to that. Uh, Chris, I think we share our, uh, our opinion on that, and because you come from real realistic martial art, which is a, uh, which is a fighting of boxing, and when you come, you know, and as you know, I come from wrestling, Kyokushin karate, and all these Muay Thai things. When you come here, and then you see that these, I can I explain it, obsession with manuscript. Oh, he did this. No, he did this. Well, he did this. Do you have this? Or did this? And I, as a fighter who tra trains like these realistic martial arts, it was, I always say, why did they just go and do it? I mean, could you please expand on that? And well, tell that's me a good question. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure I can answer that. Um, yeah, I think, uh, well, I suppose it depends why you're fencing or why, why are you doing it, you know? Um, I suppose there's, you know, people who are looking at as a martial reenactment, I suppose you could say. And that's, there's, not, there's no criticism, I think, as long as you're having fun and you're being safe, who are, who's anybody else to criticize, right? Um, I think maybe where maybe you and I come from it is we're looking for a practicality. Can, does this work? You know, how, do you, how, how would you make this work? Um, you know, we said this before, you can't learn to fence from a book. You have to, you know, at some point, you've got to go, well, under, pre under pressure, things go, you know, boom. This just goes, boom. So, you know, what is it? You're always, basically, you're, you're always, you're training the body and the mind all the time. You know, can you think under, I always say to my guys, they don't fight, hunt. You know, fights are dangerous, but hunts really are. If you can set traps. Um, so, yeah, it's difficult. I don't know. I think, I, I guess it's what people want from it. Um, difficult also the one of the one of the strengths and weaknesses of fencing in the broadest sense of fencing is it's thankfully a no consequence striking art but it means if i hit you you, you know if you get punched in the face with a boxing or a bare fist or a boxing glove you know it hasn't worked and you're not going to do that again yeah. whereas if you get stabbed several times when you've got a jacket and a bendy sword um thankfully there's no consequence um so you can, maybe that, maybe that pushes people away from doing sensible things, shall we say, <laughs> maybe. But I think, you know, you've got a, it's a big church, shall we say, it's a big church. Yeah, I mean, I remember in a, in a, when I, we were in Rome and we talked about it a bit, and you had a very good statement, you know, and because I, it was really interesting for me, a young Hima competitor, right, in a long sworder, as you call it, you know, he always said, I proved, you know, it's very funny, I proved myself, I have, I had so many competitions and say, so when I go to someone, want to say, and then this guy hadn't, didn't prove himself. And I looked at him and I said, and he told me, I don't remember, 74 uh, competitions he took part and medals and so. And so, and then he said, he looked at me and you're going to laugh about it. He said, look, so what? It's like, look, this MMA fighter with this record, this boxer with this record, this Kyokushin guy with this record. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him, said, are you kidding me? <laughs> so what? 
Are you comparing this racket with the boxing boxer racket, Muay Thai racket, MMA racket, or Kikushi racket? Do you know what these guys go through to make that racket? And you, you know, this is exactly what you know we always talked yeah. about. Yeah. Because he thinks what he's doing is realistic. But you said it always in Rome. They're not fighting with sharps. This is not a that realistic. Change, that would change everything. Just the, you know, you know, even even the 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 possibility of being punched with a boxing glove makes you cautious. Yes. So think about what it must be like if somebody had a sharp sword where you know you could be seriously maimed or killed. You know, Protection. you would fence. You your fencing would be so different. Absolutely, very different. And that's one of the problems we have, I guess, as a as a as a discipline. You know, when we do weapons training, is it's a no consequence. You know, we're not teaching, there's no consequences for mistakes. So we have to, how do you find a way, you have to find a way to train realistically and safely. That's very difficult because it's easily, it's easily abused, which is where the competitions are difficult. I mean, I think competitions are fun and if people want to do them, you know, why not? You know, they, they can be great fun. Um, but without the fear of consequence, you're going to fence in a way that is unrealistic and will probably probably eradicate 50% of the technique of using a using an aged weapon. Yeah. Because you just wouldn't do things. People would do things that you just you just wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. I fully agree with you. It would be very different. It reminds me of what Mike Tyson said once. He said, man, everyone has a plan until he gets punched <laughs> yeah. in the face. <laughs> exactly. yeah. This is the lovely, lovely comments, yeah, right? It's true. It's true. You know? Yeah. And it's, um, in the, but you can see, you can see, you know, there is a need, especially in the West, there's a need for competition, to sport, for sport. There's, yeah. there's a need for that. And so you can see it's, a, it's, it's the easiest way to, to try and popularize something is to give people that thing to work towards. Um, so I can see why it happens. I'm not sure. It's also a question of like attracting it. investors, right? So yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think, but like, like you know, when when you when you train any any form, is you've got to be honest. It's being honest with yourself, isn't it? That's part of the battle. You just got to be honest with yourself. You know, really, would you do that? Am I that good? Yeah. Chris, what is your opinion about uh, some people, they say to in order to get a feeling for sh sparring with sharps, they, I mean, they simulate with sharps, they're very careful with sharp swords and show some things. What do you think it has a value of such a training? I think it has a value to do it because obviously a sharp sword moves differently. Yeah. And the edges bite, as you were saying, you know, the edges do bite. Um, so sometimes you'll find um, a technique that will be mentioned in a manuscript and you try it with a training sword and the sword will just bounce, bounce. bounce over and, and hit you. Yeah? And you think, well, maybe that's because it's a flat edge. The flat, if it was a sharp, it might bite into the sword. You're right. um, so I think it's a very, um, if, done, <laughs> if done well, it's a very useful, it's a very useful training path to take. Um, but you can only do so much with it, of course. Yeah, of course, and you need to be careful. Yeah. You need to be Is that careful. something you guys do? Do you do some? Um, we, I mean, not with my, <laughs> I don't want my guys to do it at a certain level. Yeah. But, you know, we, of course, at, when you come to I a think also, it teaches people to respect the weapon. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, you know, you all, know all, all martial arts are about respect at the end. You, you've got to you respect know, I, you know, Chris, for example, I also, you know, we also fight in armor and then people come and say, you know, they bash against armor. But, you know, but, you know, the thing is, even that is not, not realistic because I keep telling guys, a sharp sword, and I say it as an antique analyst, right? A sharp sword, right? Even if you are in an armor, you can kill a man if you go to the gaps. You see what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, you know, again, it is not realistic, right? Because then, you know, in armor, these guys attack each other, bash, and, you know, someone comes and grabs the helmet of the other guy. 
and always and tries to pull him down. Do you really think he would dare to grab the helmet of the other guy or parts of this if the, the other guy has a sharp sword in the hand and can go under armpit or in his throat or in his eye when he's grabbing something like that? He would yeah. never, ever. You know, and then that's the reason, you know, and as you already know, I mean, in traditional Japanese battlefields, right, uh, arts like uh, uh, Katori or many of them, they come with sharp swords to each other. They don't spar, but they are very careful. They just say to get the feeling and respect for the sharp sword. Because once you have, also in Katori or others, once you have someone in Kenjutsu, I mean, once you have someone drawn sharp sword, you don't need to, it's not a sparring, you know that. But yeah. even if we go back and forth, you hear your own heartbeat because you know, this is a weapon. Yeah.